as you watch these hearings, I know you have your former student, Merrick Garland, in mind. What are you hoping the attorney general saw in last night's hearing? Well, I believe he saw the culmination of an extraordinary presentation in which there is no conclusion possible other than the one that the very impressive law firm of Barry Burke and Neil Katyal um, present, present, presented on your show just a few minutes ago, namely that the president of the United States deliberately decided that he was going to seize and retain power no matter what. He exhausted all possibilities in terms of going to court. That was fine. But when that didn't work, he developed phony electoral certificates. And when that looked like it was not going to work, he assembled an angry mob. He knew that they were armed. He aimed them at the Capitol. He made sure that the magnetometers were off. He knew that some of the arms were deadly. AR-15s were included. And then, as Merrick Garland undoubtedly watched last night's hearing, we saw the 187 minutes pass, in which, as you said, Lawrence, quite powerfully, Merrick watched the commander-in-chief, not of the United States, but the commander-in-chief of an armed insurrectionary mob aimed at the Capitol. And during those 187 minutes, he did everything he could to make sure that they continued on their course. He sent out a tweet making sure that they knew that he thought the vice president was a coward. It was clear that the mob was doing exactly what he wanted. And what I am hoping that Merrick Garland will do is recognize that just as he told the American people in a press conference a couple of days ago, nothing could be more dangerous to the country than not to hold accountable someone who commits the high crime, the serious federal felony of attempting to overturn a democratic election. And I think that at this point, Merrick Garland has only one decision to make, and that is how quickly to move forward. He can wait, and the longer he waits, the more powerful the evidence will be. But the perfect should not become the enemy of the good. I hope that Merrick Garland realizes that time is not on his side and that waiting indefinitely will not be a good idea when the country is on a course that puts it in collision with the survival of democracy. And I think he is going to do what any good attorney general would do, but he's a particularly powerful and, and brilliant one. And that is to organize an indictment that is airtight. He could either go the rather simple course that Barry Burke suggested, charge the easier but quite serious crimes of attempting to obstruct a congressional inquiry, or he could go the more dramatic course that Neil Katyal suggests, and that is seditious conspiracy and inciting and attempting to uh, foment and aid and abet a violent insurrection. He could do all of the, the above. It seems to me that there's no reason to leave, leave anything on the field.